Hi Capricorn, welcome to Sugar Free. This is a read for October 2018, general read. A three card major arcana reading, then one from the swords, one from the wands, one from the pentacles, and one from the cups, and then one from the wild Quan Yin oracle. Uh, Quan Yin is the Chinese Buddhist uh, goddess of compassion and uh, closely linked to the Tibetan Buddhist goddess and mother of the Buddha's Green Tara. And uh, the mantra for Green Tara is Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Soha. It's all over the internet if you fancy that. Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Soha. I've been chanting that mantra every day for five and a half years. And gosh, what a lot of good it has done me. And as I say, her Chinese counterpart is Quan Yin. And the mantra for Quan Yin is Namo Quan Shi Yin Pu Sa. Namo Quan Shi Yin Pu Sa. And that's a lovely mantra as well. Uh, I did a 40 day practice of that um, a couple of months ago. Uh, where you chant 108 times for 40 consecutive days. And these 40-day practices are really, really amazing things to engage in if uh, if that's of interest. You choose a mantra and you chant it every day uh, for 40 days. And uh, it's interesting that it's 40 days because 40 days really features a lot in a lot of uh, spiritual traditions, doesn't it? I mean, Jesus was in the desert. 40 days uh, before the flood it rained for 40 days and 40 nights it's, uh, it comes up again and again the 40 thing um, but if you chant a mantra the same mantra every day for 40 days you're not quite the same person at the end of that 40 days as you were when you started that's for sure anyway let's have all that I'm just going to give one more shuffle Oops, oh come on no I don't do that <laughs> One more shuffle. Gorgeous day here in the south of England. Gorgeous early autumn day. Last cup. Three cards. Here we go. Tower in reverse. Death in the upright. The fall in the upright. Oh, looks like a bit of a biggie month, Capricorn. Bit of a biggie month. Okay, I'm seeing here um, a push-pull um, between what you can control and what you cannot control and how that feels to be uh, going about your business and uh, notions of um, shit just happening. <laughs> Um, but also um, a sense of wishing to control things or perhaps um, an attraction to the idea that you can't. <laughs> let's, uh, let's have a closer look. I mean, this three card spread, the first card is the energy as we come into the reading where we find ourselves. The second card is the block, the drain, the veil, the obscuration the underbelly, the shadow side, the hindering force. And the third card is what I call the key to power. This is the energy with which you can engage, if you wish, in order to unlock whatever is going on here, especially here, because what's here will be affecting how we move through what's here. So we come into the reading with the tower in reverse. <clears throat> And it's blocked by the death card. Now, both the tower and death are cards of transformation that we did not seek. Um, there's a, a, a quality of inevitability about the death card because death is inevitable. Um, and there's a quality in the tower card of um, 
change and and in this <laughs> illustration here destructive change coming from absolutely out of the blue so they're both things that we can't control and uh you know pretty much things that we don't want <laughs> i mean who would want to put all that effort and time and thought and energy into building a tower to be safe and strong and all of that just to have it like smashed to pieces by a bolt from the blue who would want that and likewise you know none of us wants to encounter the grim reaper none of us but it is worth noting that the death card comes you know pretty much in the middle it's 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 not the final outcome all right <laughs> the final outcome is the world but there's further to go from the death card this is about having to stomach the fact um of mortality and the fact that no matter how much you accrue how much you build up um how much you kind of draw to yourself in terms of um wealth power knowledge ability all of these things will inevitably be swept away by the grim reaper the only thing that's left is that artist's palette that is left outside of the sweep of the scythe now that capricorn is creativity it's the only thing that escapes <laughs> The power to create all of the tools the weapons the knowledge the riches the jewels we've even got the, the the bishop's hat here all of it gone gone the only thing that remains is the artist's palette but here death in the upright is functioning as the block or drain so uh, is there a resistance to the idea that um, effort that we put in to kind of get ourselves into a position of security and possibly of power can all simply be undone with one swing of that scythe and one bolt of that lightning? Now, there's real fear here i have to say i think tower in reverse is really really difficult to interpret because it is about um a kind of one-off force majeure thing that happens it's not a quality of mind so much it's it's an event so when it's in the uh when it's in the reverse it's very difficult to you know is it something that has already happened is it something that we fear happening is it something that perhaps we secretly wish might happen uh <laughs> difficult to know but um i think this is about fear this is this is about fear <laughs> um and the key to power is um getting on getting on getting on down the road with the empty mind of the fool i mean all of these things this, this all this wealth and all this this all these kind of accoutrements of life that have been swept up by the death card here all of the power that is the representation of power inherent in the tower of power <laughs> here that's that's uh, been knocked down i mean fool dude empty mr empty mind here he hasn't got any of that he's just got a stick like a hermit and any sensible gentleman of the road would would have a stick and this little knapsack that's all he's got and i mean really capricorn what more do you need what more do you need you know if your creativity and your power to um rethink things reimagine things kind of start all over again i think i'm getting a really strong sense of feeling that what you've what you've already achieved has to count for something and oh man okay i'll tell you what i'm getting here 
I'm getting that you've put in um, a certain amount, and that, that's not a kind of code for a small amount. I really do mean a certain amount, anything between zero and everything, into building the life that you have built. And <clears throat> there's this sense that you are, uh, <laughs> in that respect, obliged to kind of make it fruit. You're obliged to make it work for you. But there's an undercurrent of wanting something else. That's what I'm getting from this Capricorn. And <laughs> are you wait waiting? Are you waiting for some for something to just kind of bring it all to an end so you don't actually have to do the thing that you spent so long getting in a position to do? You actually you want to do something else? There's something tugging underneath all this. And the key to power is the empty mind, the open road, the whole new start, the, the zero card. There's nothing in there. <laughs> There's nothing in there. He's not carrying anything. He hasn't got any like qualifications on him or, or any kind of like... Yeah. You know, titles or letters after his name. He hasn't got any of that. And he's perfectly happy without any of that. He's got everything he needs. And nothing else. I, I'm just going to take a little bit of time, if you're still with me, to have a closer look. Because this, this is really powerful. Yeah, so I'm just going to say it again. I think there's um, a, a sense of being boxed in to whatever it is you've 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 built for yourself thus far. You know, and this could be a relationship, it could be a business, it could be a career, uh, family set up. And there's a sense of being boxed in and kind of wishing that something would come along and um, take it off your hands. And I say that because the death card in the upright is functioning as the block or the drain. So there's, there's and I do see it here as a wish for this to come in and actually bring this about. <laughs> Because, you know, you've built your tower, you're in it, but you don't feel good in it. It's not actually what you want, Capricorn. That's what I'm getting from this. And there's this wish that the Grim Reaper of all of this would just come in and, and like, make it all go away. That's not going to happen. I, 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 well, no. Why did I say that? I have no idea whether that's going to happen, going to happen or not. What I do know is that in this reading, the key to power is the the willingness to um, turn away from what has gone before and begin again. The willingness, not waiting for um, circumstances and events to place you in a position where you are able to do this, be the fool and start all over again. Because this is here as the block or the drain, rather than something that, that is coming in for you to engage with. Right, let's see what we get in the swords. Okay. Feeling trapped by any chance? Eight of swords? Ooh. Now again, this is this is self-willed, and yeah, courage, Capricorn, Capricorn, courage, courage, courage. Because you know, no matter how much you might be secretly wishing that events would take your responsibilities off your hands, so that you could get a clean slate and start all over again, like the fool. That very wish is preventing you <laughs> from, from accessing this energy here. 
And that is self-willed. And that's when you get caught up in a kind of circular, you know, I, I want this taken off my hands so much that the wish for it to be taken off my hands is actually blocking me from putting it down myself, actively putting it down and walking away from it. That then becomes a, 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 a closed circuit. And that's what we see here in the Eight of Swords. But it can all be uh, walked away from. It can. Sometimes it's the hardest thing in the world to walk away from a situation. You know, especially as an earth sign, you know, you have an awareness that um, life is not necessarily perfect, that things are not necessarily going to make you happy every day. And you can take the rough with the smooth. You can see all that as an earth sign. However, if there's something really underneath that saying, no, this is about more than life just not being perfect. I want something else, something different, not necessarily more, but different. OK, five of ones. Well, yeah, I think this is going to be back in back and forth inside you through October and there are arguments on um on both sides aren't there and they're, they're, they're equally weighted because for me this is what the five of ones is about it's about um a kind of a useless conflict and it's useless because all the people engaged in it have the same power they're all the same size they're all the same status they're, and all the sticks they're wielding all the ones they're wielding are the same size there's equality of power here so no one can win and no one can lose. And it just goes on and on and on until, excuse me, until there is a collective uh, decision to stop fighting. Other than that, it just goes on and on and on. A bit like this Eight of Swords just going round and round and round. But, I mean, what would happen, Capricorn, in the, in the Five of Wands here if one of these... Um, young uh, chaps here was to actually lay down his wand and go you know what this is ridiculous no none of us can win this but that takes some doing that really takes some doing because there's every chance that say if this one says look you know this is crazy we're just going to go on fighting here because we're equally weighted if he was to put down his wand and say that, the other four might just go and like smack him over the head with their wands and he would then be the loser. So who is going to have the courage to actually pull the plug on this? Okay, wow, yeah. Well, there's a... Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a fear... That if you um, if you were to actively end whatever it is that is making you feel stifled, and that you're kind of, and you can see, you know, good arguments for retaining it, and also good arguments for for abandoning it, frankly, and walking away, and that's why it would be so much easier if this were to happen and take it out of your hands. Um, I guess there's a fear that you will lose more than you will gain if you do that because here we have the four of pentacles where the pentacles are really you know really really held on to the only one that isn't i mean you know he's got a foot over each one here and this one here, he's really pulling into his heart i mean he's encircling it with both of but the one up here in his mind anyone could come along and just like i just take that off it's not actually strapped to his head so it is somewhat less, um, it's it's more vulnerable to, to change, I would say. And it's in the mind. And I mean, if we move into uh, the, the, the place of, um, of yogic thinking, um, we could say that uh, what's under the feet represents the root chakra, uh, which is to do with, you know, blood and bones and limbs and hands and feet. This here is the heart. And the pentacle very, very closely sort of pulled into the heart and perhaps the solar plexus chakra. 
But this is is the mind. This is the union. Uh, the crown chakra is the union with every everything, <laughs> basically. You know, even beyond the brow, even beyond the, the third eye chakra. This is up in the in in the mind. This is consciousness. This is pure consciousness. And this one is free to move, Capricorn. Just saying. Okay, and one from the cups. Goodness me. Okay. Four of cups. Hmm. I mean... <clears throat> Gosh, there's a lot going on here. He is... Uh, He's drunk from the three cups. And in that respect, he thinks he knows what is in the fourth cup that the cosmic hand is offering him. And this is the kind of can't be asked card. The, they're like, no, you're all right. No, I'm good, thanks. No, 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 no. No, don't worry. No, take it away. It's fine. It's a cosmic hand, Capricorn. <laughs> he could at least like have a look. Or like stick his conch in it and have a little sniff. It might be something different from what is in those three cups. Yeah, and this this jaded energy here. But I, but I think there's something else going on here in the context of this reading. This really really does seem to me that there's a kind of cusp of a new phase for you that is quite frightening and that's perfectly understandable because it would entail or perhaps you imagine it would entail having to leave behind everything you've already achieved everything you've already built and done but I think that might not actually be the case I think the transformation might not be as drastic as that but I think through the month of October, there's just a lot of toing and froing going on about uh, what you want to keep, what you want to leave behind, and um, what the implications of that are for you. Um, but the key to power is the fall, and this is the new start. And I've got to say, in this reading here, I mean, these cards kind of change expression for me in the context of what else is going on in the reading. He just looks really happy. He looks really happy. Sometimes in other readings, he looks a bit weird and sort of slightly, um, ever so slightly sort of, you know, a bit like weird, like road guy. You know, But he just looks happy. <sighs> Tis the key to power, Capricorn. Right, let's see what uh, Kuan Yin has to say. Okay, I'm going to spread the deck. Uh, okay, I'm actually going to take two. I wanted them both. Okay, we get play with me. <laughs> and here is the lovely little snow shepherdess. The, 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 the cosmic plains woman. And she's there with the bison or the yak or whatever it is. And this huge, huge animal, she's playing with it. So... <laughs> and uh, she trusts it completely. You know, this animal could crush her <laughs> and uh, and gore her and just completely destroy her with 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 one move. But she trusts it completely. She has this very very easy complicity with this incredibly huge creature. She knows it so well that she can play with this massive force. So I would say, and this is for me, it's chiming in with the happy look on the on the face of the fool here in in the key to power position here. This could really, really be very worrying for you, and you know, being worried about stuff isn't 
um, <laughs> something you're completely unfamiliar with, Capricorn, is it? Um, but you can afford, this is telling me, to just kind of ease off the what if this, what if that, what if everything I've done so far like comes to nothing, but secretly I kind of wish maybe it would because I want to do something else and, oh, and this backwards and forwards in the five of wands and holding on to this and refusing that and not wanting to know and feeling all trapped in the eight of swords. You can afford to ease off a little bit, Capricorn, and just have some fun. Just have some fun. It will do you the power of good because this, you know, this bison here, this creature here, as I say, has huge power. But she trusts it completely not to harm her. And I think the power of these things that you're trying to weigh up here or that you're thinking about here through this month, yes, they're very, very powerful. Um, but, you know, they're not, they're not the end of the world. They're not the be all and end all. It is just simply something that you're thinking about and you can afford to play with it. And perhaps even if you... Like let go of all the sort of seriousness of it a little bit and just and just play, have some fun with it. You know, this could yield really interesting results. We also get grandmother ensures safe crossing. So what this is telling me, Capricorn, is um it's such a beautiful card. What this is telling me is that what you already know and knowledge that you have already accrued about yourself, and that to me is represented in the grandmother here, um, will help you um, weigh up things this month and get you from where you are at the moment to wherever it is you decide you want to be when you make this crossing. And the grandmother ensures a safe crossing. So, you know, you do have the tools. You do have the inner tools to take whatever this decision is. And there might not even be a definitive decision. But the key to power here, as I keep coming back to, is the fool in the upright. So it's the spirit of the fresh start, the spirit of the empty mind into which anything can come and the spirit of, uh, of the open road. Right, I'm going to leave it there, Capricorn. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, please share, please subscribe. And I'll see you again for another reading. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.